I speak from experience in saying that not everyone gets into medical school straight from high school. Hey there, my name is Koketo Mohoko and I'm a medical student at the University of Free State. And in today's video, I'm talking to you who did not get into medical school straight from high school and is still very much eager to become a medical doctor. Whether you didn't get into medicine straight from high school or you look at your metric results and you're not really that impressed, you feel like you are not going to make it in first time. Whatever your situation is, there is still a lot of hope. Because there are so many options out there, you can either rewrite your metric exams, take a gap year, go to university, do a bridging course. And in this video, I wanted to talk about all those processes and all those um, different options you can go for in depth and I'll try my best to cover them as best as possible. Now before we get any further into the video, I'd like to talk about UPass AI, which are very proudly sponsoring this video. With AI getting increasingly sophisticated and more powerful, it has become quite difficult to get AI content to bypass AI detectors because it is almost always guaranteed to be detected by an AI software. Well. UPass is your solution to that problem because it is an AI tool that is generated to make AI written content look more human and helps you bypass these AI detectors. Introducing UPass, the ultimate hack to writing papers and it is designed for students like you and me. Let's ask ChatGPT to give us an essay about medicine in South Africa. Then we copy this AI generated essay and test it against an AI detection software like Originality. And as you already know, the essay is 100% AI generated. Now let's try GPT-0 to see if maybe it can detect that the text is AI written. Now GPT-0 says that the text is 100% AI. Now 2 is never enough so let's try CopyLeaks. CopyLeaks is also another AI detection software that we can copy and paste the text into, load it and it'll confirm that the text is 100% AI content. Let's try 0 GPT now which shows us that it is 100% AI GPT. But that is exactly where UPass AI comes in because with UPass you can take the AI generated text and change it to a text that is human written. UPass has its own built-in AI detection which ensures that the output it gives you is indeed human written and can bypass all the top AI detection software. Now we take the human written version of the essay given by UPass and paste it on GPT 0 which shows that it is 100% human. Now we do the same thing with the text on 0 GPT which shows that it is 0% AI GPT. This proves that the text given by UPass does bypass all these AI detectors. But let's try copy leaks yet again. Now this version by UPass has shown that it is 0% AI content. UPass is fast and easy to use and has an additional threshold adjustment feature in which you can adjust the level of plagiarism to set the sensitivity level of the detection system. Many students around the world praise UPass for its effectiveness in helping them achieve academic success. That is just simply how easy and effective it is to use UPass to bypass AI detectors. And to try out UPass AI today, click on the link that will be in the description box down below and let's get back into the video. So your first option is to take a gap year. And one of your options, there are actually two options to taking a gap year. The first one is to take a gap year and do nothing. The second one is to take a gap year and supplement your results. But we'll start with taking a gap year and doing nothing. What I mean by taking a gap year and doing nothing is not that you stay at home and you become a potato. No, do something with your life. You can either go get your learners, get your license. I don't know, do something. If you love football, you can play football for that year. And how this is effective is, so you are after finishing grade 12. So your most recent metric results are grade 12 results. Notice that when you are in grade 12 and you apply, they require your grade 11 results because those are your most recent results. So if you're taking a gap year, your most recent results are your grade 12 results. So if you feel like your grade 11 results are not good enough or they're not convincing, but your grade 12 results are exceptionally wonderful. So you can sit at home, take a gap year, and when applications reopen during a gap year, then you apply, but you will only be required to apply using your grade 12 results. I hope that makes sense. Now, this is better by far. So to put into perspective, the universities in South Africa that uh, offer medicine take on average, let's say 200 applicants because it's 180 at UFS, 250 at UCT. So on average, it's 200 applicants uh, that they accept. So what happens is 80% of those spots are given to people that are coming from high school and 20% are given to those that come from university. 
And if you are taking a gap year and you apply during your gap year using your metric results only, then you're considered as part of the high school applicants. So that makes it better by far. And then the second option of taking a gap year is that you take a gap year, but to supplement your metric results. That is, if you, after writing your metric results and you're looking at your metric statement and you're not impressed, and you feel like you have to improve something here. So you can rewrite your metric exams. And what you do is when you get your metric statement in the beginning of the year in January, you go to your teachers and you ask them that I want to supplement, I want to repeat my exams. And they'll give you a form to fill in and submit to Kai Kai. And it's as easy as that. Now, deciding whether you want to supplement or not is a very time sensitive decision because you don't have the entire time. You don't have all the time in the world to decide whether you want to do it or not. It is very time sensitive because you get your matric results mid to late January and you're supposed to have applied to write your matric exams again at around February or yeah, early or late February. So you have a few days to weeks or so to decide whether you want to do this or not. And should you do this, I wish you all the best and may all your efforts come to light. Now, the second thing that you can do is to go to university and study a bridging course. Now, one of the most important things that we need to notice is that there's a difference between a mainstream course and a bridging course. Sometimes you find someone who's studying BSc saying that they are studying a bridging course, but it's not necessarily a bridging course unless if it offers direct entry into medicine. And you already know what a bridge is. The Nelson Mandela Bridge, for example. A bridge is a structure that carries a load across an obstacle leading into direct entry or access to something. So a bridging course is a course that you take which leads directly into the course that you want. We'll take as an example for argument's sake a BSc bridging course that I know at Sefako Mahato Health Sciences University. The BSc course uh, has a BSc mainstream, which is like what I was studying, and then it is a BSc bridging course. So the BSc mainstream course, just like the one that I was studying, is a BSc course, which is three years long, and you study it with hopes of going to postgraduate and doing your honors in chemistry, physics, and all those things. And if you do many qualifications and study long enough, you can even become a lecturer, right? And then the BSc extended program, or rather the BSc uh, bridging course, is the one where you study BSc and this one is four years long. So doing first year and second year of the extended program is equivalent to doing one year of the BSc mainstream course. And the BSc extended program in Sefako Mahato Health Science University says that if you study your first and second year and your combined average of first and second year is over 75%, then you qualify to get into medicine. Not that you will, but you qualify to get into medicine. But now the tough part here is they only take five people into medicine. They only take five individuals into medicine from the BSc extended program. So there's a difference between a BSc and a BSc extended program. So if you do this BSc extended program, these are the requirements, those that I just told you. And what you need to notice and realize, which is very important, is that they do not take five people from the BSc. They take five people in general. So if someone decides to apply from accounting and their marks are higher than yours, who is in the BSc extended program, then they just might take that person over you. So you need to work extremely hard. It is quite difficult, actually more difficult to get into medicine from university than it is to get in straight from high school. This is because medicine is a very competitive course to get into or even stay into. And it takes a lot of work to get into. A lot must be done. You must be willing to sacrifice. You must be willing to go through all the gruesome and painful experiences to get to where you are. And this in itself shows how important it is for you to be doing medicine because you want to and not because of the aesthetic or maybe because your mother wants you to do it, you know? Now, there's also another program called the GEMP or the GEMP. That is the Graduate Entry Medical Program. And it is offered by Wirtz University. And what GEMP allows you to do is to skip the first and second year of medical school and get into third year of medical school. As I said, it is only offered by the University of David Batas Rand. And other universities have their own programs like in UCT where they allow you to skip only the first year and in UP where they allow you to skip the first six months. So that's the first semester. The requirements for this program is that you must have completed an undergraduate degree or be in your final year of an undergraduate degree that has biology, chemistry, physics, and mathematics at first year level. 
and if your course or your degree that you're studying does not have these then you can do them but for more information on that i'll leave the link to this website on the description box down below so you can check out every single thing so it makes a lot of sense there now when you've applied to get into the graduate entry medical program you'll be required to write a test or an exam called the WEPT and that is the VETS Aptitude Placement Test and what the WEPT is is a test that basically tests all the two years that you'll be skipping as I've said that you'll be getting into third year of medical school you'll be skipping first year and second year so what this WEPT test does is it tests the content that other medical students know from first year and second year it will be testing anatomy physiology and molecular medicine and what you need to know which is important to know is that the work that will be asked in the web test which is 100 marks will be content that covers two years worth of content so that's quite a lot it is very important to pass that test because it shows whether or not you know the years that you're skipping. And to qualify to write the web, you must have gotten a minimum average of 70% in your bachelor's degree, in your final year of your bachelor's degree. Now, notice that I've said bachelor's degree because only bachelor's degrees and bachelor's of technology will be considered to get into the graduate entry medical program. And the required 75% average is an aggregate of your final two years of study. If, for example, you're in the final year of your undergraduate degree, that is maybe you are currently in third year. So your last two years are third year final results and your second year final results. And they take those two final marks and they take the average of the two. And if you are maybe doing your postgraduate studies, they take that first year of your honors degree and the last final year of your undergraduate degree and they use that too to aggregate it. And if they find 75%, then you qualify to write the WEPT. Now, another thing very important to remember is that as much as I said that the GEMP program is offered at the University of Rebatis Rand, you can study your degree at any university, but you can only apply to get into that program of medicine at that university. Now, the information that I'm giving about the graduate entry medical program is very vague and it is not as specific or answering most of the questions that you probably have. So I'll leave in the description box the link to the VERTS website where you can get more information and I'll leave a link to a video by Unosi Pomhlanga, Dr. Unosi Pomhlanga, who has been a doctor for the past four years and she got into medical school through the graduate entry medical program at the University of the Witwatersrand. Now, another thing that you can do is you can go to university and study a course that is not a bridging course, which is what I did. I studied a BSc in Human Anatomy, Physiology, Biochemistry and Mathematics. And someone else can be studying a degree in Accounting. I have a friend who was studying a degree, two friends actually, who are studying Actuarial Sciences and they're currently in medical school with me. So this type of method of getting into medicine is immaterial of what course you are studying in university. As long as in your final metric results you have physics, maths and English. You can study any course in university and there's someone at UCT who's studying medicine that I know who was studying a degree in I think arts but in matric she did have physics, maths and English. So yeah. Now this process and this method of going in is much more broad because it is immaterial of what course you're studying as I've said and it is much more competitive because what you're doing is you're going into university studying a course that you don't want seeing that you actually want to get into medicine and you're doing that with hopes of working hard enough to get into medicine to get accepted across a pool of a lot of applicants to put it into perspective at ufs uh, they take 180 students on average and 35 of those places are reserved for people that are doing uh, uh, degrees which is basically this category that we're talking about now so only 35 of you will be accepted to study at UCT in this 35 uh, half of them must be female half of them must be male in that half again I think it's 36 because 35 is no half 36 and in that half I think it's 18 18 in that 18 a certain percentage must be white a certain percentage must be black so they make sure that in classes there is that variety. We can't all in class be Zulu, we can't all in class be Black, we can't all in class be Indian. So they make sure that there is that variety. A certain percentage must be from a certain geographical location because you can't be in a class and 90% of the class is from Joburg. So this one is much more broad because the people that are required, the requirements are much more niched. So whatever the marks you get, you must hope that there is no one else who's going to top your marks who is also looked for in that biographical um, requirement. 
Now, one important question that I have a lot of people ask me is what mark am I supposed to get to get into medicine through this method, Koketsu? I don't know. I try my best to actually not tell anyone what exact mark to get because if you get a 90 and Koketsu said get 90, you think you're going to go in. What happens if you don't? If Koketsu said get a 60 and you don't get in, what happens if you don't? Then now you're going to tell Koketsu, Koketsu, ah, you lied, you said this, this, this. So this thing is very broad because I have a friend who got 90s. He's into medicine. There's another one who got 70s. He's in medicine. I know someone else who got, yeah, he got 80s. His average is 82 and he got in. And there's uh, Ben who was at UCT when I was at UCT. He still is at UCT, he's studying, studying third year of medicine now. And Ben got an average of 72. So it does not really, it does not really have an exact or defined number to say, get this average and you're in. Because what if you get a 90 and in your year out of this 35, 38 other people get over 90, you're not gonna get in. But if you get 60 and somehow no one else gets above 60, then you get in. So it's about that. They're just gonna rank your marks, see who's at the top of the pile and then start choosing. So I cannot say what mark to get because I don't control what marks your competitors get. And so one of the most important things that we need to appreciate is the fact that we all go through different routes and journeys to get to a certain destination, right? And it is these experiences that make us who we are and shape the person we become in the future. So whether someone else had to study actuarial science to get into medicine, whether someone else had to go through high school to get into medicine, and someone else had to do a postgraduate degree to get into medicine, it is these experiences that build who we are. It is these experiences that make the journey worthwhile because eventually we will all become doctors. But our story of how we got to that destination is what makes it all beautiful. Otherwise, this has been Koke. So if you want to see the first part of this video about how to get into medical school straight from high school, click on the video that will be on your screen. And thank you to UPass for sponsoring this video. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Stay happy and healthy. Peace.